In this video, I thought I'd go through some of the differences between AQA biology and OCR biology for our biological molecules topic. Now, it's so important to know, firstly, which specification are you doing? Secondly, to download your specification and check that you are learning the right stuff. There's not huge amounts of differences between the two exam boards for this particular topic, but there are slight differences that could trip you up if you don't know what you are supposed to be learning. I'm going to take you through some of the differences, as I said, from the biological molecules topic. So one of these differences is if you are doing OCR biology, you do have to know the differences in the structure of the sugars that we find in a DNA nucleotide versus an RNA nucleotide. So over here, you can see our DNA nucleotide. And on the right, we've got our RNA nucleotide. And this allows us to actually see the structure of deoxyribose sugar, which is here, versus ribose sugar, which is here. Now, these are both five carbon pento sugars, but have a look at the difference. On carbon two, which is this carbon here, deoxyribose sugar has a hydrogen group below carbon two, whereas ribo sugar or ribose sugar, sorry, has a hydroxyl group below carbon two. Now, if you're doing AQA, you don't have to recognize these structures or describe the difference in the sugars. You should be able to name the sugar if you're doing AQA, but if you're doing OCR, you do have to learn the structure of these sugars and be able to describe or spot the difference between deoxyribose and ribose sugar. But it's that simple. It's literally just what's below carbon two. If it's a hydrogen, it's deoxyribose sugar. If it's a hydroxyl group, it's ribose sugar. Let's have a look at another difference. If you're doing OCR biology, you have to learn specifically about hemoglobin when you learn about proteins. Now, hemoglobin is a conjugated protein. What that means is it's a protein with a prosthetic group. Now, you might be asking, what's a prosthetic group? Well, the prosthetic group in hemoglobin is the heme group. It's basically a non protein group. So as we all know, whether we're AQA or OCR, we know that hemoglobin is a protein. It's a globular protein. We know it has four polypeptide chains, but within each of those polypeptide chains, there are heme groups which are not made of protein. So this is what we call the non protein group. There are four of them in hemoglobin, also known as prosthetic groups. And the fact that hemoglobin has these prosthetic groups makes it an example of a conjugated protein. So this is language that you should be able to use for OCR, but it's not necessary for AQA. What else? Again, thinking about proteins, if you're doing OCR biology, you have to be able to name examples of fibrous proteins and globular proteins. So fibrous proteins are usually linked to structure, right? They're structural proteins because they are longer and thinner and fibrous. So if you're doing OCR biology, you should be able to name collagen, keratin, and elastin. Now it does say on your specification that you don't have to know the structures of these proteins in detail, but you should know that they are structural proteins and you should know where they're found or be able to give an example of what they're used for. So collagen is about providing mechanical strength. You can find it in the walls of arteries, you can find it in tendons, and you can also find it in bones. Keratin, again, it's a fibrous protein, it's a structural protein, so it is about giving strength. You can find it in fingernails, hair, claws, hooves, horns, even fur and feathers. It's also waterproof. Elastin, it's strong, it's extensible, which just means it can kind of extend or stretch and recoil. It's found in the skin, so it can be stretched. The lungs, so they can inflate and deflate and in the walls of arteries, so arteries can stretch and recoil to regulate the blood pressure. Your examples, if you're doing OCR for globular proteins, so these have a more spherical shape, we've got insulin, 
which we do learn about in AQA when we do blood sugar regulation. It's produced by the beta cells in the pancreas. Obviously, it controls blood sugar or blood glucose. Hemoglobin, we've already said it's a conjugated protein because it has a prosthetic group, but it's also an example of a globular protein that you need to know for OCR. And catalase, another globular protein, this one is an enzyme. It's an intracellular enzyme, which just means it works inside cells. And it actually catalyzes the reaction where we break down hydrogen peroxide to safe products, water and oxygen. So yeah, you've got a list of examples of proteins to learn if you're OCR. You might be questioning, all of this is extra stuff for OCR. Why does OCR have this extra detail? Remember, if you are doing OCR, you don't have the 25 mark essay. So in place of that, there are a few more little bits of content that you have to learn all the way through A-level biology. Finally, something else I've picked out from the biological molecules topic if you're doing AQA, you no longer have to remember which bases are purines and which bases are pyrimidines. But if you're doing OCR, you do. So adenine and guanine, these are our purines and you can see they have a double ring structure. The way I actually remember that is purine is a shorter word, it's a longer base. Thymine and cytosine are our pyrimidines. Now, the way I remember that is pyrimidine is a longer word. It's a shorter base because they have single ring structures. Now, obviously, if you're doing AQA, you do have to know the names of the bases. You have to know the base pair rule. So adenine pairs with thymine, guanine pairs with cytosine. But if you're OCR, you may also have to remember which ones are purines, which ones are pyrimidines, because you always get a purine, which is a double ring base, pairing with a pyrimidine, which is a single ring base. So the rungs of the DNA ladder, if you like, will always be the same length. This was taken off AQA when the specification changed but it is still something that you need for OCR. Now, what was the purpose of this video? It wasn't really to teach you this content, but it's to highlight the differences and just to kind of tell you how important it is to check your spec, check your learning from the right resources and that you know the content you're expected to learn so that you're not learning stuff you don't need to, but you are learning the right stuff.